Hey, it's Pupmeister! Get ready to illuminate your Minecraft world like never before with the latest update featuring the Copper Bulb. You can create some really stunning effects with this new bulb. And today, we are going to be going over every single aspect of this new bulb so you fully understand it and some really unique cool things you can do with it so let's get started well you might be wondering where do i get a copper bulb how can i find a copper bulb well as you can see behind me if you go to a trial chamber they will be everywhere <laughs> and all you need is a pickaxe in order to get them. Don't use your fist, don't use an ax, it will destroy it. You need a pickaxe. So you can get pretty much as many copper bulbs here as you could possibly want, but you can also craft them. So let's take a look at what you need if you wanna craft one of these guys. You're going to need a block of copper, one blaze rod and one redstone dust. Now, as far as the blocks of copper, they must all be the same weathered kind. As you can see in my inventory here, I have oxidized copper bulbs, weathered copper bulbs, exposed copper bulbs, and copper bulbs. <laughs> and that is basically how they weather over time. And I'll be getting into that a little more later. But just know for this crafting recipe, you need to use the same block of copper that is the weathered the same. So you put the copper blocks like that, the blaze rod in the middle, and the redstone dust at the bottom. And that will give you four copper bulbs. If you haven't gone to the nether yet, you haven't found a fortress, you don't have blaze rods, whatever, remember you can find a ton of them at the trial chamber. So let's go over what I was just talking about. As you can see, over time they will weather and they will become more green as time goes on. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the regular copper bulb, the exposed copper bulb, the weathered copper bulb, and the oxidized copper bulb. So other than being weathered, as you can kind of tell here, the more weathered the blocks are, the more dim the light. And I've made something over here, just so you can tell a little better. If we go in here, this is the oxidized. So you can see how dim this is. And you can use this for lighting effects if, of course, you want a spooky or gloomy area. Um, you can use this oxidized, but you can see how dim it is. So the next one, the weathered, you can see is a little brighter. It's still not, you know, the brightest, but it gives a light level of eight versus this one is a light level of four. So you can see how, yes, it is lighter, but it's still a little dim. As we go to the exposed bulb, you can see this one is a lot brighter. And this one is giving a light level of 12. And it does a pretty good job at lighting things up until you compare it to the actual <laughs> copper bulb, which gives a light level of 15. And you can see how bright this is. And just very quickly as we go down the hallway, you can see how they slowly get dimmer and dimmer. So that is the difference between the light levels 
of the different copper bulbs. Now, just like regular copper, as I mentioned over there, they will oxidize over time. But if you don't want them to oxidize any further, you can apply honeycomb. Just by right-clicking, you can see the yellow effect around the bulb. And now this will never weather. It will always stay nice and bright. But, oh, and of course, you lose your honeycomb. So for each time you wax a bulb, you will need one honeycomb. But you can actually do it to any of them. So let's say this is the light source that you want, which is a light level eight. You can wax that. So it will always remain a weathered copper bulb and never oxidize to this. And you can, of course, unwax it just by right clicking with an axe and you can see the white effect. You have now taken the wax off the bulb and it will now weather and eventually turn into this bulb. Now the other thing you can do is also take off the weathering. So for example, if you have this, if you used oxidized copper blocks to make your bulb and you get this, but you really want this, well, you can use your ax to take off the oxidization. So right click once, it has now become that block. Again, it's now become that block. And last but not least, if you do it again, you have now taken it all off and it is a regular copper bulb. At which time you can wax it if you want it to stay this way or not. It's up to you. Now there is a difference between the redstone lamp and the copper bulb. And the difference is the redstone lamp needs to be lit with a redstone current, whereas the copper bulb needs a redstone signal. For example, you click a button, it takes the signal and it stays lit. The redstone lamp takes the signal, but as soon as the button releases, the power goes as well. So it kind of turns a button, if you want to look at it this way, it kind of turns a button into a lever. Because the lever kind of makes an on off switch. And as you can tell, as long as that lever is pulled, it stays lit. Whereas this needs just the one. See, this one has to be clicked twice because it needs that redstone signal. And by the way, the little red dot in the middle is showing you that it's getting a redstone uh, current or redstone signal at the moment. I flick it off, no current, but it stays lit. And then if we click it again, that's turning it off. And you can see it's still getting that current because it is a solid current. You take it off, no more current, but of course it doesn't change. Whereas this is very, you know, it's getting a current or it's not getting a current. If it's not getting a current, it's off. If it is, it's on. So for those of you who do redstone builds, and I am no redstone expert by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> but you can make what's called a one block T flip-flop. And what the heck do I mean by that? It means it can turn anything into an on-off switch. Now this is a very basic example here, 
uh, especially for those who make huge redstone contraptions, everything from screens to mini games and everything else, which blows my mind. <laughs> but this is a very basic switch. So you can turn on the bulb. And as you can tell, it came back out. But the copper bulb, as we know, keeps its on status. And when you have a comparator, it can send the pulse out because it is on constantly. So it's sort of like its own redstone current because it is constantly on. And the comparator reads that and sends the current on. So for the redstone lamp, it reads it like it's a regular redstone current. So that is something the copper bulb can do because normally this little thing takes a lot more space, which I'm not gonna show because like I said, I'm no redstone expert in the first place. So the other neat thing about a copper bulb is that it can be pushed, as you can see, and it stays lit. So this is a very unique attribute of the copper bulb. If we try it with the redstone lamp, yes, it moves, but as you can tell, it does not keep the current because the current was over here. But as soon as it comes back, and this is a sticky piston, of course, <laughs> as soon as it comes back, it connects with the current again and it relights. So you can move this in its lit form and not change its status, unlike other light sources like the redstone lamp. When it is activated like this, it gives off a redstone signal of 15 when you activate it. And it doesn't matter what type of block, it can be completely oxidized or weathered or whatever, it will always give a 15 level of redstone signal when activated. So the other unique thing about the copper bulb is it doesn't affect the blocks around it. So for example, if you look at the redstone lamp, it's giving off its own redstone signal. So the other lamps that are perpendicular with the original lamp in the middle also get lit. But if you do that with the copper bulb, the other ones do not get lit. So you can literally light whichever one you want and take the button off, as you can see there, and it will remain lit and it will not affect the other copper bulbs right beside it. This, of course, allows you to make some neat screens. So for example, if you wanted to make an X, you could do that very easily. Now, the default setting of the copper bulb is off. So if you break a copper bulb that is lit, it becomes unlit or off. So as you can see, you can do some great stuff with copper bulbs as screens or signs and light it all up. We're gonna take a look at this actually in the dark and it looks amazing. So let's look between the lines here. <laughs> That's right, consider subscribing. If you enjoy tutorials that will tell you how to do all kinds of stuff, and we do even have a Let's Play as well that you can watch, please do consider subscribing. It helps the channel, it helps our algorithm. I totally appreciate each and every one of your subscriptions. And remember, clicking like and subscribing are completely free. 
So let's take a look at this at night. So we've gone way up on the hill to take a good look as night comes. And I'll just wait for it to be completely dark. And here we are. As you can tell, it looks amazing in the dark. So imagine what kind of pictures or other messages and stuff you can create super easy with the copper bulb. As you can tell behind, there's no complicated redstone or anything. Basically just put buttons where you want it and then break the buttons when you're done. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll use some of this information to use these copper bulbs in new and unique ways. It can really change the way you light up your world. So thank you so much again. Have yourself a great day. Again, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.